All right, welcome back, guys. Um, so today, recording, got a better setup for you guys, as you can see. Um, got a record, well, got a camera this time standing, so it should be good, and the lighting should be better as well. So hopefully, the production should be a lot better for you guys and bring more value to you guys also. So today, I'm talking about character building. And I know it's different from the family topic, um, but the reason being is because you want to try and switch between different, you know, topics are going on. So I can't just lock myself into the family stuff if nothing's coming in. You know, no one's there. Not to say there isn't anything coming in for the family stuff, but there was this character building thing has been on my mind quite a lot. And the reason being is because now that I'm basically nearing the end of this episode of like being in university, which I've been in for the past four years, basically... There's a lot of discussion in my head top thinking about what kind of person am I going to be. And I've always been fairly certain about what kind of person I am, but now that I want to try and, you know, I, have, I haven't got any university hold me back from being able to achieve what I want to do. Not saying that university was a hamper to that, but now I'm not busy with doing university. I can actually, I have the free time to basically pursue what I want. But now it's up to me, you know, you know what's there. So, of course... You know, for me, I'm thinking about what kind of character I want to be. And so that's why I want to dive into this topic. That's, that's sort of that personal drive, motive for why I want to do it. So the main, the main thing I want to chat about with character building is that with character building, what I mean is investing in yourself. So you know how in life, you, when you want to pursue something, you got to make, in essence, you got to make investments. So you got to take resources, be it money, be it time, be it rare resources, whatever go on it may be, you want to put it into something, be it. So let's say you're an industrialist, you want to make a factory, so you get equipment like electronics, the, the, the workforce and all them things. You invest in them things with your money, right? And your, or your loans and, your invest, and, and, and the investments other people made into you and you invest it into the capital, which is basically what those things are, and um, you make it, right? And that's what you do. So in order to build what you want, you've got to make certain investments into that, into that, into what you want. And with the industrial system, it's a factory with a musician. It may be um, investing time into studio time, investing in social media campaigns to get yourself out there and all them things are one, investing in like, you know, mics and microphones and all them things there, like, or getting a producer, cameraman to shoot the video when you're done with the, with recording the sesh. Se se I don't know how we, what, what, what I call it, but hopefully I'm getting it right. Um, but yeah, in them, them things that go on there. So obviously, when it comes to um, it's character building and what I'm referring to, you see people make investments in external things. But what I'm referring to is more what you invest with internally. And this is what some may call, the economists may call it human capital. Some people might call it self-discovery. Those with that have more sort of a Zen philosophical sort of um, motive on it. Someone might call it, um, you know, self-improvement. You know, and these are all valid ways to sort of dis talk about it. They all sort of pertain to different areas, but they all pertain to building character. So, when it comes to building character, what you ought to do is, in essence, um, think about what kind of virtues and traits will make you achieve the type of person you want to be and how being the type of person you want to be pertains to what you want to achieve. And I might not be making sense with this particular, uh, what I'm saying at this particular point now, but what I'm referring to is something similar to what a philosopher known as Aristotle talks, talks about. Now, I don't agree with everything Aristotle says. Like, those who know about Aristotle might know that he is um, a philosopher from the Greek times. He's a student of Plato, and Plato's a student of Socrates. Uh, you might not know who these guys are. I didn't know initially, but these are big boys in the philosophical game, and like, these are, you know, Socrates, the granddaddy of, like, you know, Socratic philosophy. When I say Socratic, we're talking about before the... before before. So basically, there's a, there's, there's a quick sort of notion here. There's a, there's a give a bit of context to it. You had philosophy before, before Socrates, so that was like more stuff discovering about what's the world made out of and the more like early natural science in it. Um, and then you have Socratic elements where we start to think about what people typically think about philosophy, which is uh, uh, how should I live my life? What's right and what's wrong? 
um, how should the state be governed? All these different things are why. Like this is this is the juicy stuff that people think about when they think about philosophy initially. And you know, Aristotle is one of those donies that like he 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 did some like natural philosophy, like um, basically you know all natural science as we could call it now, like uh, categorizing biological things and the like. But he talked about character building. Well, he didn't call it character building. It was more virtue ethics. Um, virtue ethics being ethics that pertains to you living your best life. Uh, some may call it your best life, but um, living a flourishing and prosperous life is what Aristotle is aiming at. And the reason why he believes that is because um, for him, like the character that you have is, a, is important to achieving what he considers eudaimonia. Because he, see, the thing is with Aristotle, yeah, the way he, the way he patterned it was like this, isn't it? So in his mind, he said, uh, and I'll use my own example. So let's say you've got a knife in it. A good knife does the job. If you're a chef, you want a knife to cut things fast, cut through it cleanly, and not make a mess. And that's what the knife's job is. If you're a huntsman, you want to, you want your, you want your knife to fulfill different utilities, like skinning the animal, the animal, the carcass thing, and all them type of things. That like knives have different purposes, but for the purpose that it has, in order for it to fulfill its purpose, it has to have certain characteristics. So its sharpness, its its um, its its uh, its durability. So how long it lasts, like, all these things play a role in it fulfilling its function. And the same thing pertains to human beings. With humans, we have a function, we have a, we have, we have a goal. Now, what that goal is, is important to answer, right? And so to Aristotle, in essence, what that goal is, is eudaimonia, which is flourishing. Being, living, like I said, living your best life. And in order to do that, you need to have certain characteristics to do that. You can't just have any characteristics, you can't just be... Can't, you can't just take any car random characteristics and then, boom, you're living your best life. What you need to do is you need to develop certain key, key virtues. So these are positive traits that you nourish over time. And with Aristotle, what I, what I like about my guy is that he doesn't try to approach it in a very sort of um, abstract, theoretical kind of way. What he tries to do really is he, he wants you to sort of develop these characteristics in on 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 the on the ground life, like you you gotta with, with when you're developing characteristics these virtues that we're talking about right, you gotta you gotta you gotta go out into the world you're gonna make mistakes and what you, what you do is you start to develop what he calls practical wisdom, Ross, practical wisdom, right, and when I talk about practical wisdom it's basically any trait that you're trying to um, uh, pattern or gain more of in order to become, make it a virtue and pertain to building your character. So let's say you're um, an entrepreneur and you want to be more productive. So in order to be more productive, you don't just think, okay, you don't just theorize about, ooh, what can I do to be more productive and uh, do this, this and that. Like, that, that's important, but you need to go out into the world and try different methods of productivity and see which one actually works. Because not to say that the, every method is, like there's, there's one absolute method that we need to find but you need to find the method that works for your goals and your purposes right so let's why you want to be an entrepreneur you want to be an entrepreneur so you can make money to you know fund x y and z purpose because that's what you want to do with your entrepreneurship right and so let's say your entrepreneurship is you want to be an entrepreneur so you can build enough money to invest in your local community so when you want to be productive you want to you know, maybe be productive in like community outreach, you know, um, you know, find out research, doing research on like um, different values of properties and um, find out what, what kind of things your community needs to um, better, better fulfill its, you know, the, each individual's goals within that community, right? And so that's what, you know, with that example of the entrepreneur, you have those, that productivity being, like, you need to find, okay, when, when you're being productive, wh what kind of things can I do to, to make this more efficient? And you can't just do that by just theorizing about it. We're going to Aristotle. You need to be out there in the ground, making mistakes, making the flaws in your, uh, not making the flaws, but recognizing the flaws and then amending it over time. And that's how you gain a practical wisdom. That's why Aristotle really believed in, like, in order for people to be in roles, you've got to have to have a better age than you because you, without, you know, through age tends to come experience and experience comes wisdom and all them things there. 
Um, not necessarily agree with all that. You know, some people have gained experience, have been through a lot at a very young age. But that aside, I, I get his point. And so, when it comes to building character, you've got to, you've got to, you've got to build certain characteristics, certain traits that will allow you to fulfill whatever your happiness will be. And that everybody has this, you know, and to, to Aristotle, the reason why happiness is the most important thing is that whenever, to him, right, whenever we do something, why do we do it? When we ask ourselves why, okay, our, you know, let's say, you're, let's say you're a Christian and you go to church and you ask yourself, why do I go to church? Uh, you know, you say, oh, because I want to be, get closer to God or I want to uh, prove myself. You ask yourself, why do you want to do this? What will it bring you? What's the end result? And Aristotle says, at its core, kind of like when you, you know, you look at you look at any molecule, you go to its final minute components. Like when you take and when you take someone's motivation, you go to its final minute components. The the fundamental building block there is happiness. Like you want to get there because you want to be happy. And when you say happy, we mean functioning well and flourishing. You want to prosper. You want to be doing well. You want to be excelling. And you want to achieve excellence in whatever you want to do because that was, that's what brings fulfillment. And so that means that you're functioning in the best way you can. And so that's why to Aristotle is such an interesting philosopher to talk about when it comes to character building. There's so many different other philosophers that talk about it. I'm sure some people are looking, staring at me like, Michael, yeah, you, Aristotle's cool. But I don't like him too tough. And I'm sure there's, I know a philosopher or two that does a lot better job at doing that. And we can talk about other philosophers at a later date. But right now we're talking about Aristotle right now. And, and again, when we're laying it all back to the character building, right? When it comes to character building, what you want to do, right, is you look at these... With Aristotle, you're developing virtues. So virtues, are, again, are these positive traits. And for him, what you want to do is you want to try and... Uh, the best way to suss out a virtue is because, you know, sometimes you want to be more... A virtue, for example, could be you want to be more courageous, but you can't just wake up and be more courageous. What you got to do is you got to kind of reflect and figure out, okay, you know, through reflection and also going out there in the world and figuring it out, you got to find out when there's an, ac an excess and there's a defect of virtue, of that particular virtue for courage. So an example of too much courage is brashness, isn't it? Like, so you're, so you're, so you're, say you're a big man, you think you can go up to a group of guys and say, I will go on you. And just go up to them and start making all kinds of noise, taunting them, and you get beaten up. You get thrown into, you get you put into a bad situation. You can end up dead. It's bad. Um, a defect of 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 of, uh, of courage could be, let's say, you're in the entertainment industry. You are on. You are a little intern in a big talk show, and you're re you've really been talking with you know your 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 your, your higher ups that you want to have a slot in this talk show. But, and then all of a sudden, the opportunity knocks on your door. Your, your, one, of, one of your higher-ups like, hey, yo, I know you've been really seeking this opportunity and, look, I've got a slot for you. You just need to make sure you seize the moment, you come in with a smile and you do this and that. And then, then you get the feeling that, oh, I don't feel like I can really do it. Like, ah, maybe another time and the opportunity's gone. And that's where you had a defect of courage to seize that moment. The only one's there. So you've got you to gotta, you gotta find that, for Aristotle, you've got to find that balance, that mean. One of the criticisms that people put forward is that uh, you never know where, where's the perfect like, line. Like, how do I know when I'm, being, when I'm just over the excess or just under with the defect? Uh, to be fair, Aristotle, I don't think he really says that you know, ultimately. I don't think, uh, I don't think it's healthy to sort of think of Aristotle as thinking of, uh, of his virtue ethics as being something that's a perfect system. But it's a functioning and effective system, right? And so you're not going to get the ideal thing. But what it will do is that it will improve your situation, in, in, a, in a sense. If you're able to reflect and find out when you're being too courageous and you're not being courageous enough, then you'll be able to find out, okay, this is what I, this is what I need to avoid, this is what I need to avoid, and these are the options that are more f for me. So the courageous example would be in the example of, the guys, uh, the, the two guys, the, the, the guys, you twitting the guys was, if you see a bag of guys and they're about to do you something, then perhaps the best situation is to have the courage to just walk past them, don't show fear, and leave them alone, and you'll be all right. Uh, the, opportunity, the example of courage with 
the situation with the, the, the opportunity knocking your door has been as an intern in the entertainment industry was okay. All right, you're gonna go out there and you're gonna you see you, you, you get given an opportunity. Okay, you think about okay, what can I do? Da, da, da. Don't overthink it. You just go in and you try you try a situation. It might it might flop. It might not do so well. But you seize the opportunity and now you put yourself out there. So that's what I mean. Like when you're building character, you're investing in yourself because what ends up happening is that you are the person who's making decisions and choices. Every you know, to me fundamentally, I believe that we have choices to make. And the type of character you are is, in a sense, what you choose to do in your life. The, the amalgamations and the, the collection of all the choices you make. So when you make those choices, you want to make sure that you have the right characteristics to make sure the choices that you want are able to be achieved by you. Because if you, like I said, if you lack the courage, then you might not be able to seize opportunities that would actually warrant you, you know, better prospects for later down the line, you know, long term, you know. And so... Building character is so important in that regard. Like, and that's why, you know, like I talked about earlier, for me, I, think, I always think about like, you know, what kind of person I want to be, what kind of characteristics are going to be helpful for what I want to do. Like for me, I'm doing all this content creation because I want to put myself out there. I want to try and gain um, more of a, a, a broader, broader horizons in terms of like people I engage with, the kind of thing, the kind of, the kind of opportunities I can seize. And so, and ultimately, I want to try and, you know, do entrepreneurship. So building the right characteristics is a good way to have your interpersonal foundations that you need to, you know, deal with the outside world in an effective way. And so that's why character building to me is an important thing. And, uh, you know, I don't necessarily agree with everything Aristotle does in his philosophy, but I think this particular aspect of his philosophy has, has some merit. It has a lot of merit, actually. And um, hopefully, you know, with this being said, we can, you know, if you guys agree or disagree with any of the points I made, let me know. Um, if I, anything I need to, be, I need to modify, also let me know. Um, and yeah, the, you know, dear man, let me know in the social media, in the social medias, be it Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, any of them. Let me know what you think. Any feedback is always positive. And I appreciate you guys taking the time to listen. So I'll catch you guys in a bit. Hope you have a good time. In a bit, my guys.